What's up guys, it's Conrad here and in this video we're going to be talking about the science of getting rich. Now this is a book I've just recently read. It was recommended by Luke Belmar, the GOAT himself, and uh, I've kind of broken it down and applied you know, what the author is saying in this book into 10 steps that I'm gonna be following in order to help improve my skill sets of making money. So this is my understanding and breakdown of the book and I feel like I've kind of got these steps clearly. I'm applying it into my own life and I wanna be able to share it with you so that you can do the same and take something away from this. So step number one here, guys, is gonna be about changing your mindset. So you need to be able to start to embrace these ideas that Wealth is actually a positive thing for you and you know, start to shift your mindset from one of poverty into one of abundance and you know, recognize that these desires that you're having for yourself you know, are just a calling from deep within from like your true version of yourself to be able to you know, achieve and reach your fullest potential. You, know, you wanting to have a lot of money, you wanting to, I guess, be the one that makes the difference in your family is not a bad thing at all. And uh, you're actually able to help a lot of people when you put yourself first and you make that happen. So about changing your mindset from poverty into abundance. And this is the first shift that the author kind of mentions in this book. And the other thing I'll note is that if you really did believe that you know the desire that you have to get rich is God you know calling you to reach your full potential and express yourself and do everything that he was like put you on this earth and you were created to do then you know that belief in you achieving these goals and actually making it happen is going to become invincible so that's just the thought that the author puts out there but I really like that idea as well. So that's step number one. Step number two is going to be understanding that you know, creating wealth is not about luck. You know, understand that it's a legitimate method. He even calls it like a science of getting rich. Uh, that is you know, going to be able to help you create wealth for yourself. So you know, it's not about a specific business. So stop thinking I need to do crypto or I need to do this or I need to do SMMA or whatever and start to think about, okay, I could choose any business, but if I just applied and actually learned about these principles and this specific way of doing things, then that's how I will be able to create wealth for yourself. So it's important to kind of understand that. And the other part of this that I kind of started to understand was that because creating wealth is about doing things in a specific way and you know, the wealth that you have in your life, whether you're of poverty or of abundance, it's about you having done things in a specific way. It just kind of helped me solidify and understand that you know, broke really is a condition of the mind. If you don't have what you want, if you don't have enough money to pay the bills or whatever, it's because your mindset is fundamentally kind of flawed in some area. And when I used to hear this in the past, I'd be like, nah, bro, I'm working hard, like I'm doing this. Uh, but now I kind of understand that, hey, I was just using these laws of, you know, what he explains in this book against me instead of to work for me. So that's step number two, it's not about luck. So step number three here is really about understanding that you create wealth in your mind first. So there's three kind of fundamental statements that he actually go, goes about explaining that kind of lay the foundation for creating wealth for yourself. And these are them here where he says, there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates and penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought. Man can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon, upon the form of substance can cause the thing he thought uh, thinks about to be created. So what he's basically saying here is that there's this magical formless thinking stuff and when I send a thought into it, uh, then I can start to have that created into my reality. And the stronger and the more faith and belief I have in these thoughts and in you know this former substance creating wealth for me and creating those opportunities for me, the better it's gonna work for me. So I know it sounds a little bit crazy right now, but I've even thought about it when I was reading this, I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, when in my life have I wanted something really bad? And I kind of thought how things just kind of started to happen for me and I was able to you know, meet the right people or make the right connections or, you know, things just started to work out because it started in my brain th first and then I guess it transmuted to this form of substance, which was then able to you know, create itself into reality. So, you know, whether you agree with this or not, you've got to be able to kind of take some time back 
and think about you know how this has been applicable into your own life so far because what you think about is what you are going to be able to get so you need to be able to start to really guard yourself against you know negativity uh, negative thoughts and really maintain a positive mindset and the belief in these three statements and really believing that what you think about like as you think so you are the faith and the belief in that is so so important this is like the vital kind of underlining process uh, principle from this whole book right step number four here is going to be about creating and stop competing Okay, so in order for you to stay tapped into, you know, this formless substance and to have, you know, the universe work in your favor, uh, you need to abandon the mindset of competition and understand that there is like abundance for all. And you don't have to you know, get what you want by taking it from someone else. You know, you're, there's always going to be an opportunity for you to be able to get what you want by giving other people what they want. And the author says it's really important for you to kind of stay in this harmonious state because this is how you know these laws of the universe kind of operate so you know the creative energy works through and establishes channels of natural growth and things will just start to happen so if you can be a creator if you can think about what different value you can add if you can use those creative ideas that come to you and you don't have to compete with anyone you don't have to beat anyone you don't have to try to be better than anyone else uh, and you can just do your own thing, stay in your own lane and use the powers and strengths within yourself to you know, provide value and to, to help other people, um, then you know, everyone's gonna benefit and your success in business is gonna be inevitable. So that was a really big point, create, don't compete. So step number five here is about knowing thyself. So most people don't acquire the wealth that they want in their life because it takes thinking power and people just aren't prepared to think. You know, he goes on to say that a lot of people uh, will stray and avoid it's the, the hardest work in the world is to actually sit down and think. And that's why a lot of people don't end up creating wealth for themselves. So hopefully if you're watching this, you can understand and, and see the value in actually sitting down and contemplating making a plan and understanding uh, how you can use your brain to be able to create wealth for yourself. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose a business that matches your strength and you're also gonna follow the shift in wealth. And so just think about how that applies to yourself in your own personal situation. Uh, I also wrote some questions down here for me where it was like, what could I be the best at? You know, based on my skills, is this in high demand? Uh, what service or product could I provide to the market which would 10X the value of people buying it? And just some things that can help you understand your strengths and what value that you can provide to the marketplace so that you can use your brain and think about how you can actually add value to the marketplace doing what you want to do. So step number six is really just about, you know, doesn't matter where you're starting, right? You can only connect to this formless substance and to have things start to work out for you if you can be grateful and happy for what you have now. So gratitude unifies the mind of a man with the intelligent substance so that man's thoughts are received by the formless. So to kind of kick off, you know, putting a vision into reality and to actually have this start to work out for you, you need to start to be grateful for what it is that you have in your life right now. So man can remain upon the creative plane only by uniting himself with the formless intelligence through a deep and continuous feeling of gratitude. By focusing on the best, you will continually get the best and lack of gratitude for what you do have will keep you poor. So just remember this guys, you know, for us to be able to cast a bigger vision and, and to create a better reality for ourselves, it starts by being thankful and appreciative for what you have now. And then you can tap into this form of substance and start to have these laws and principles work out for yourself. And step number seven here guys is about impressing God. Whether you believe in God or not, you can change it to the universe or whatever you believe in personally. But you know, your vision and your fullest potential, it should scare you. You know, it should be something that you you need, you know, you, you feel like you can't do it for yourself, that you need that that higher power, God or whatever it is, to come and help you with it because it's scary for you and you think like, could I really do that with my life? And the reason for this, right, is that 
The main reason people fail is that they don't aim too high and miss it, it's that they aim too low and hit it. And when I was reading through this, I really thought about how, you know, that's been applicable in my own life of how sometimes I've aimed for lower targets and I've hit it when, you know, these laws of the universe are in play anyways. I might as well aimed ridiculously high and missed it a little bit than actually aiming lower and hitting. So it's just important to be able to understand that um, even if it does seem a little bit unrealistic and crazy, you need to start to impress God and to you know use this principle to kind of push your comfort zone and to expand your vision. That's really important. So what I've personally done here is I've written a da uh, plan down for the next 12 months of what I'd like to achieve in my business, in my personal life, in my health, and in my mind. And I've written a vision for kind of all of those. So guys, for your vision, it needs to be clear and precise. Um, you basically just needs to push your comfort zone and, and kind of make you doubt in it a little bit. Um, you know, try to really impress God with this. And so write it down in the present tense like you already have it. So for me, for example, how I would write this down with my trading is like, okay, I have 1 million in funding. I make 100,000 US dollars each month from my trading. And you start to write down your vision in that present tense like you already have it. And what this does is it signals to your brain that this is who you are and you start to be able to attract what you are because you can't, you can't attract what you want. You can only attract what you are. Like this works with people, business partners, jobs, opportunities, all of that. It's the exact same thing with the vision and your goals is that you can attract what you are. So you need to start to state your vision in that present tense and, and be affirming to yourself that you have these things and that you know even though you don't have them right now, you wait for that in anticipation and you realize that these things are coming to you as long as you can you know, be grateful and you can stay on that creative plane and you can keep the vision in your mind and trust and have faith in these powers working for you. So that's step number seven, guys. Writing out that clear vision is so, so important. Step number eight here is about controlling your environment. So once you have written a clear vision for yourself, you need to stay focused on it and start to structure your environment so that you can always have this at the forefront of your mind and never lose sight of it. So start to create that space for yourself, you know, the, of what you want. Change your phone lock screen, you know, put up a bit of a vision board or some photos around your office or your work environment or in your car of where you're going and what you want to attract into your life. And the author says this in one of the key points. He says, too much stress cannot be laid upon the importance of frequent contemplation of the mental image of your vision, you know coupled with the faith and, and having gratitude that it's going to actually happen for you. So this is a really important, you need to start to use your willpower and don't allow doubt or negativity to think to, to come into your mind and to really keep the faith and know and wait with anticipation that you know, the customers are out there, the people are out there, whatever you're working on will come to you as long as you keep the faith and you just keep going and trusting in the universe or God or this formless substance that it will come to you. And if you're having a hard time and you feel like you're always losing sight of your vision, then it probably means that you don't want this bad enough. You know, you don't actually wanna change bad enough and none of the things in this book will actually work for you. So step number eight is about controlling your environment. Now step number nine is about getting to work. So the answer to prayer is not according to your faith while you are talking, but according to the faith while you are working. So now that you've got your vision, you know what to think, you know what to do, now you need to use your willpower to actually go out there and start doing the right things. And just focus on the input, right? Focus on getting 1% better every single day. You know, don't think about all the things that are outside of your control. Like for me, making these YouTube videos, right? I don't know if it's gonna go anywhere. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen from this. Uh, but what I do know is that I can focus on what I can control, which is, you know, putting out better content for you guys, getting a little bit better, changing things out, you know, making two videos in a week, not overthinking things, just, you know, doing the things and controlling the input for it. And then the rest of the stuff, the thousands of viewers, the people's lives that I wanna help and impact and the people I want to share, the, the stories that I'm learning, that's where you know this form of substance, that's where God takes care of that and provides that to me. And this is how I'm kind of applying this into you know, even this YouTube channel. So 
Uh, yeah, that's basically what you need to do is just start to focus on the input of what you can do in your business every single day and do all that can be done every single day and just don't put this off else you will, will fail. And the other important thing to note is that you, you know, it's not a good thing to be super arrogant about you know, the perfect opportunity. If you have this vision and you start to go on this journey and start taking action and some opportunities come your way, just take it and then if it's not the right opportunity for you, then you're gonna outgrow that and you can always level up and just start going from one thing to the next and ask you know, God or whatever you believe in for the guidance around that. So step number 10 here is about keeping the faith. So really understand that what you create in your mind, you can also have in reality. So any doubts and fears, it actually diverts you know, positive energy and you can, it can prevent you from you know, these things kind of coming to life. So you need to use your willpower to maintain faith and the purpose of your vision. And when you're in doubt, just wait, you know, fall back onto the contemplation of your vision and increase your faith and purpose. And by all means, in times of doubt, cultivate gratitude. So you've got to just be aware of that. If you're going through hard times, stop and think about how it could always be worse and be grateful for what you have and just stay focused on the vision and the next step and maybe even just take things day by day and you're gonna get there, okay? And you just also gotta be aware of the fact that when you do start to see success, you know, be aware of your need and possession for power over other men and just keep your mindset on check because these things, if you apply them into your life, uh, the author says that they do go and create you know, these, these results that you want for you, uh, but also they have the opposite effect if you stop doing that, where you can lose you know, what it is that you may have built. So just always keep you know, these kind of key principles and thoughts in mind. And so the final thoughts here, guys, is that you need to study these principles consistently. You know, make the teachings a constant companion until mastered. That's actually why I'm making this video is because I wanted to explain the teachings of this book and I wanted to put it in a bit of a process for myself to really understand and master for myself. So I definitely recommend that you read this book and come back and even watch this video again and think about why I've structured the 10 steps like this and what the author has said about creating wealth as well. And just avoid any conflicting ideas um, while you're establishing this faith, while you're creating that mental image for yourself and you know, you're in your early days and you're starting, you know, things started, start, haven't started to just happen for you yet. Just keep going and keep focusing on these principles. Keep having the faith and believing that it will come. Stay on that creative plane, cultivate gratitude, think about the vision and it's all gonna be all right, bro. So that's pretty much everything for this video, guys. Uh, I really hope you enjoy it. And, you know, I'm actually excited about applying these principles into my own life because I do have the faith and the belief uh, that I can you know, achieve my vision and I can make some things come true. And, you know, maybe I come back to this video in a couple years time and I just show you, hey, like this is how I got rich. So that's it for another video, guys. I hope you are going well. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.